Kelly, you were just saying we've, we've educated Jeff now on what gifts are. And Je Jeff, are you? T t yeah, yeah, I love the gifts, man. I'm all over the gifts. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not even even going to use text blank. I'm just going to give people. Uh, I love it. I know I do. Didn't think you'd come over so easily, Jeff. It was the Muhammad Ali thing. I thought to be able to have all those clips, you know, and to just send. I love it. It's yeah. fantastic. You didn't like Marilyn Monroe, but you like Muhammad Ali. Yeah, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, talking about Muhammad Ali, did, I, I met him twice actually. Right. Um, when I was when I was a lot younger, and um, took some pictures of him, some pictures of his daughters, and uh, when he came back the second time, I gave him the pictures of his daughters. Wow. And he's, he cool. autographed that's them. Amazing. Cool, man. That's amazing. Yeah. Cool. So that's that's one of my highlights of, oh, of, of yeah, that when, would I, be when for I was me younger well. and stuff. That would be you know? for me. Yeah. I've met sure. about six Muhammad Ali's. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm talking about the real one. <laughs> the real one, not not. <laughs> And that's just your uncles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are two of the more Uber drivers. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is there any other weird experiences you'd like to share with us, Abdi, while we're on the subject? Weird, not really weird experiences, but I grew up in South London, and um, okay. I remember when I was like in my adolescent years, um, I joined the gang, and I had no idea. Uh, I, I don't, a gang? Yes, in Brixton. <laughs> <laughs> you? In a... I was 16 years old. But this is the thing, like, I'll, my dad had no idea, so he got me a job at the local library. So, like, I couldn't tell the gang, you know, I just got a job at a library. <laughs> so, like, so I had a double life. I was a, I was a gangster librarian. That was... <laughs> and I remember one of the gang members one time, he was like, go and rob someone. And I was like, okay. And I was, like, nervous. He was like, go and rob that guy. And this guy was big. I was like, no, no, I'm going to rob someone else. So I saw another guy. So I went up to this guy, and I was like, give me all your money. And he was like... You work at the library. That was, the most, <laughs> that was so yeah, funny. Bro. That was so funny. Bad, so bad. No, no, no. His yeah. books were overdue. His books were overdue. <laughs> yeah, and then the gang sacked me. <laughs> they didn't sack me. They beat the fuck out of me. <laughs> Do you have any weird experiences? So many weird experiences. Well, I mean, it was weird for me just personally because of who I am now, but like, I had a girlfriend when I was 14. And no that was way. Really weird. Yeah, I fingered a foof. Um, you, 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 <laughs> no, because I'm not sure if, if he, what he's saying is what I'm thinking oh, or whether it's some delicatessen kind of food or something. <laughs> I don't know which delicatessen you go to, um, but I put my, insert my hand into a lady, well, a girl, she was also 14, it wasn't like weird. And I put it into, and it was like putting your hand into a shredder, and so I never did it again. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> so that right. was, it was just sh weird to me. What do you mean it was like putting Well, because I, I felt like I put my hand in it, and I was like, ow, my hand shouldn't be here, it hurts. Oh, okay. Because I, it just wasn't meant Might for me. Might just have been the wrong girl. <laughs> you, you yeah, she had a vagina. Um, are you sure you put it in the right place? Yeah. Because it's not supposed to, it's not supposed to cut up your fingers. <laughs> it was like nettle stings, is that wrong? Does she, um... <laughs> does she One listen? girl really loving it, and the rest of them are like, this is Covent Garden, beam it up <laughs> um, Does she listen to Queen? <laughs> No, but she totally knew who I was before I admitted who I was. Because for my birthday, right, she got me the Charmed duvet set. Do you know the TV show Charmed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you wouldn't buy that to your heterosexual boyfriend, would you? You'd buy it to your hashtag GBF. And so, therefore, she absolutely knew. But that was like an interesting time. What emoji sequence would you use to sum up that sexual experience as a 14-year-old? Um, ginger boy, brunette girl, vomit face. Aubergine. And a hedgehog. <laughs> That's the shredder part of the hedgehog. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just such an interesting experience. I had so many... I'm, like, really boring now, but, like, when I was younger, cos I also worked at, um, like, a little cafe when I was 15, 16, so my best friends at that age were all, like, these 80-year-old women, and I'd honestly have the best banter with them. I really would, cos they'd come in and they'd be like... Cos we're from, like, camp, proper council. So they'd be like, oh, who have you been shagging this weekend on Canal Street? I'd be like, Doreen, your son. Um, <laughs> so that was kind of like what I grew up with. So I feel like now I'm just so boring because nothing ever fucking happens. Like if I gave Jeff and you a handjob at the same time, people would expect that. Whereas all this would not be expected. <laughs> Not that, are you? That's not what he signed yeah. up. All of a sudden, my man's face is getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> <laughs> it's, funny that, uh, it's funny that you had a, you had a gender thing, as because I, I had a bit of an unusual thing gender-wise as, oh, as okay. a child, because both my parents were teachers, 
and I had to go to the school where both my parents taught. Oh no. Which is not, <laughs> but, that, but that's not it. No, that's I not know. all of it, because the school where both my parents taught happened to be an all boys school. And I went to an all boys oh. school. And uh, the worst thing wasn't that it was all boys. There were 200 boys in that school. I was the only girl. Uh, but the worst thing was in my last year at that school, uh, we did uh, Grease the Musical, because it was, you know, that time when everyone was doing Grease the Musical, <laughs> and I, I didn't get the part of Sandy. Oh, <laughs> no! That's hilarious. I got the part of Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I can believe. Yeah. <laughs> but isn't it, but I like, do you know what I like about these stories, though, is because I think we're very box-sticky now, aren't we? So everyone will go away, like, I'll be the gay one, you'll be the black one, you'll be the woman. <laughs> uh, like, but I think it's, we're so much more than that, and we kind of forget. I forgot no, about you the woman. Oh, sorry. Well, I thought you meant I right. dapper one. Yeah. Yeah. Take it. Uh, you're still stalling on the Jeff one, though, aren't you? <laughs> He's the angry guy. <laughs> Scary one. <coughs> and, right, but in school, like, you couldn't... Because guess what? Guess what? Well, you wouldn't know. I have a black belt in Taekwondo. No yeah. way. On, show, I fucking do. do, do I uh, fucking do, do have a black belt in Taekwondo. <laughs> and the reason I got into it, so I got into it technically for a gay reason, but then I got a black belt, which is very not gay. And um, what was the you, reason? You right, because I saw this with interview. <laughs> well, yes. Yes. That was why I stayed. <laughs> but the reason I got there was because I saw this interview with Sarah Michelle Gellar, mm -hmm. and they said to her, "Oh, how did you get ready for the role of Buffy?" And so she said, "Oh, I take Taekwondo." Do classes, then my brain was like, well, I could be a slayer. And so <laughs> I did, so I went to a Taekwondo class and then the instructor, Richard, was really, really fit. And in my head, I was like, of course a 35-year-old will end up with a 14-year-old. Laws are changing. So I stayed. <laughs> And, and that's how you became a black belt in Taekwondo? And that's how I became a black belt in Taekwondo. I just wanted to ask, are you gay? No. <laughs> it's just a very good character to get on the podcast. Lovely. <laughs> Some, no, seriously, oh, there is answer, because some people think I'm gay. But you're not? No. Oh, I was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> it's because the way I dress. That's well, it's, not it's the reason. Very, it's very dandy. <laughs> yeah, dandy, that's a good word. Dandy. Yeah. I said dapper, you said dandy. Yeah. Prince Abdi, the dandy Somalian. Yeah. It's got a catch to it. <laughs> yeah, dandy. and that's, that's your USP. Where are the other dandy Somalia? Any dandy Somalians in? See? Yeah. Got that Forever thing. hold your peace. <laughs> <laughs> You've still got that scary gang vibe, haven't you, at I times? Know, like where you could, like, kill us. Oh, I stole a pack of crisps, and I thought that was gangster. <laughs> what flavour? Uh, cheese and onion. Oh my god. <laughs> I just wasn't good at being in the gang. My gang was scarier than your no, gang, to, man. To be honest, the, the people I was around were scary, but I was probably the least gangster person because. Yeah. Have you ever been complimented? Like, you're in a gang, you're trying to be tough, and someone compliments you. Is that anybody? Well, like, what sort of compliment? Yeah, what do you mean? Like, yeah, nice like so I was with a gang once, and like, we were all like, looking at people like, very aggressively, and. Um, this guy was walking past us. He didn't look at anybody but me. So I got angry. I was like, what the fuck are you looking at? And he was like, you got lovely eyes. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I was not ready for that. Did it make you a bit teary? I was like, whoa. <laughs> this is a gay gangster. <laughs> Your gang sounds really good. Because I, I feel like, I mean, I was in a gang in school. Obviously a different kind of gang. Taekwondo. No, not the Taekwondo. <laughs> that was like my outside extracurricular. Um, <laughs> But my gang was made up of me, Anthony Dean and Philip, and Dean feels to be very masculine. Mm -hmm. And um, I once decided that I was going to enter the school talent show in year nine, and I decided to perform Barbie Girl by Aqua. <laughs> and those three agreed to play my Kens. I was Barbie Natch. And I said to them recently, because I'm still in touch with Philip, and I said, why did you all agree Looking back, that was a really stupid thing for you guys to do. And he went, Stephen, we couldn't let you go out there alone. And I was like, that is the sweetest Aww. thing anyone's ever no, That's support, that's support. That's when you know you've got your friends yeah. with you. So that's like a proper gang. That's a proper gang. Not a very funny story, but very hard. Well, I, I, I used to do that sometimes. When I used to drive in, in Brixton, I used to play like songs that you won't expect. So that when the youths would look at me, they'll be confused. So, so I'll play like Spice Girls, like, <laughs> that's Celine gangsta. Yeah, no, I'm serious, I'll play it in my car, I'll be driving, and next thing you heard, if you want to be my lover, <laughs> you got it. and the gangsta, like, the, the little youths will be like, rah, this guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk to him. You know, I, I feel though sometimes that like, when you're with your friends, there is, there is a sense of loyalty, mm. you know, so I can understand why your friends did that, because like I remember one time with um, like me and my two best friends, Andrew and Patrick, we went on a weekender away, and um, obviously it's a weekender, it's music, there's girls, 
you know, man, woman come together, but not always in equal quantities. So, but um, no, so me and Patrick had found a girl, but Patrick, um, Andy hadn't. And so what happened was, out of loyalty, we said to the girls who we were with, haven't you got a friend for Andy? And they said, yeah, they have. Her name, I forgot what her name was. Let's just call her Sasquatch for now, yeah? yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> we all decided we we're going to go on this group date. And so I'm, I'm there with mine, Patrick's here with his, and Andrew first meets Sasquatch. Now, all, all I can describe it as we come into, this, into their chalet, and Sasquatch is sitting on the chair with her legs like this. And spreading. And her shoulders are up. And, she looked like the back of the, sh uh, the, the honey monster. <laughs> and there's no way in this earth that he would have gone on a date with her if it wasn't for the fact that we're musketeers, man. All for one and one for all. <laughs> I can't tell if this is a positive or a negative story. No, no, it's a positive story. I'm saying that, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're with your guys or with your girls, that you go with the flow. You take one for the team. Or, or you... <laughs> so basically, he was with Sasquatch because you two were with the other two. That's right, and, and obviously it would have messed up the flow of the whole... Uh. I'd just like to say in Sasquatch's favour, obviously we're not here to talk about body shaming. We celebrate our bodies, whatever shape. I, th I just want to get that in there, because what Andrew should have done is worked out what sort of personality Sasquatch had and whether that might be a nice thing to pursue. Go girl, go so, girl. Uh -huh. I'd just like to get that out there. No, no, that's no, fine. But when, you, when you've got, yeah, an 18 year old's wallet, yeah, and you're trying to feed something like Sasquatch, <laughs> yeah, you won't be clapping, that's me, yeah? You've got a hunt for what Sasquatch eats. And this Because a burger ain't cutting it, I'm telling you, from now on. <laughs> She's looking to bite into lions and tigers and shit. <laughs>